the night when the full moon is bright comes a horse that known as Zorro. This bold renegade carves a Z with his blade, a Z that stands for Zorro. Zorro, the fox so cunning and free. Zorro, who makes the sign of the Z. Hello to all of you. My name is Don Diego Vega, but I'm better known as Zorro. I must confess that I am a fictional character. You may be surprised how much I look like a well-known actor and how much I sound like someone you may know. But since I am a fictional character, I have the right to decide what I look like and what I sound like. I hope you don't mind. And I hope you don't hold that against me. I understand that Opera Santa Barbara will be presenting an opera based on me. And I thought you would find it interesting to learn about me from the horse's mouth. I was created in August 1919 in a short story, which was published in a pulp magazine called All Star Weekly. The story was called The Curse of Capistrano, and it was by an American named Johnston McCulley. McCulley was from Illinois, and how he got the idea for me is still a mystery. That story was such a success, my story, that McCulley turned a new one out every month for years. I am very proud that my story has had such enormous popularity ever since then. I have appeared in nearly 60 movies, in at least seven or more TV shows, several musicals, and now in an opera. Even though I was created in 1919, I was actually born around 1800 in California. In those days, California was part of Mexico and was called Alta California as opposed to Baja California. My parents had emigrated from Spain not long before I was born. When I was a teenager, they sent me to Spain for my education. Mexico was still a Spanish colony in those days, and it wasn't until 1821 that Mexico and Spain fought a war and Mexico became independent. We lived in Los Angeles and we were really well off, unlike most of the people there who were either the natives or poor Mexicans. Alta California was run by a governor and his henchmen who were about as venal and corrupt as you can imagine. I'm sure you have people like that even today. Somehow, despite my upbringing, I was really offended and decided I was going to change things and stick up for the victims of this venal system. I was still quite a ne'er-do-well and a bit of a sissy, but my father was always harping on me to toughen up and make something of myself. So I did, but not what he expected. I got myself a disguise a black outfit with a black mask. I kept it all a secret from my family, of course. They never caught on. I became famous all over and would speak up for bad guys who never knew when I would interrupt their nasty business. They said I was as sly as a fox, so they called me Zorro, which means fox in Spanish. I kind of liked it. I then got this really great idea which became my trademark. After I had finished off someone in a duel, I would use my sword and sign him with the letter Z. That is why I am really furious about how the Russians write the letter Z on their equipment. They deny that it has anything to do with me, but the fact that they are using a Latin and not a Cyrillic letter 
makes their intention pretty obvious. Somebody put this cartoon together and sent it to me. It was only a year after I was created that the first movie about me was made. It was called The Mark of Zorro, and it starred the two biggest names in Hollywood, Douglas Fairbanks and Mary Pickford as his girlfriend. It was a huge hit. I must say that Fairbanks did a really good job playing me, and the movie was really terrific. It's my favorite. Here are some of my favorite parts. They really get my character really well. Here's the villain acting like a big shot. Here I come in without my disguises, and of course he thinks I'm a real nerd. A quick change and I spring into action. I really have fun letting him have it. He wasn't much of an adversary. Now they're after me and you can see what an athlete I am. By the way, many people have tried to categorize me with those comic superheroes like Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, but that does me a great disservice. I didn't have superpowers, I didn't wear a tight-fitting costume, and I never leapt a tall building with a single bound. No, my success was due totally to my own efforts, both mentally and physically. It took me years of training to become the brilliant sword fighter I became. Not only that, but they can't hold a candle to my well-deserved reputation as the great Latin lover. I don't think they even had a date with a girl. My second most favorite movie, about me of course, was made about 10 years later in 1940, and it starred the wonderful Tyrone Powers. Tyrone Powers had a great career playing heroic men like the Count of Monte Cristo, swashbuckling pirates, and, of course, Robin Hood. 
I like Robin Hood a lot. He used his bow and arrow about as well as I used my sword. My nemesis in the Tyrant Power movie was another great actor, Basil Rathbone, who made a name for himself as Sherlock Holmes. What I like about Rathbone is that he was both evil and smart, and, as, and he was a great dueler. Here we have what I consider, and is considered by many, to be the best movie example of my swordsmanship. You may escape him, but I will surely kill you if you write me more of these. For the step I'm in danger, grave danger, Diego here will bear me out. You're in even greater danger than he thinks. So you tried to get gold out of the country, did you? If you ever again take one peso of mine, I'll cut your throat from ear to ear. I must please ask you to change the subject. His Excellency objects to talk of throat cutting. Quiet you, Popinjay. I've no reason for letting you live either. What a pleasant coincidence. I feel exactly the same way about you, Capitan. You wouldn't fear, His Excellency, please. <laughs> we have a hero with us. Are you all right, Diego? Ask the Capitan. Get out, get out. Well, around 1950, Walt Disney got into the act with a TV series about me. Here he is with some of my fans. What about Zorro? Zorro? As a matter of fact, uh, I don't think I should talk about him. You see, confidentially, Zorro won't be on the Disneyland show. Mm. Well, Zorro is an entirely separate series on the air at a different time. Time, time. Oh, excuse me, I've got to go. All right, hold it. Just a little about Zorro, then you've got to let me get back to my own show. Well, a long time ago, there was a masked rider who rode the countryside. This was in old Spanish California, back in the days of high adventure and low, soft guitar. And that's the little bit I promised you about Zorro. Boy, oh boy, was Zorro a real person? I'm afraid not, Moochie. You see, Zorro's a mythical character. He's something of our imagination. Uh, ah! What's that? That's your imagination. Senores. Y senoritas. Zorro. At your service. As you say, perhaps I am only a part of the imagination. I remember that's what they said about me in California. Some would smile and say, Zorro, poof, he's a ghost, a dream, a myth, or something of the imagination. Look out! There was one hero com competitor I had that I really respected. It was the Lone Ranger, who was created in 1933. Of course, he was only a gringo and he used merely a gun and not a sword, but he was a pretty cool dude, and we even worked together for a while. That Rossini Overture, that is his theme song, it's pretty good, but I like mine better. It's got real words. I have been a star of every single media, print, film, TV, and eventually computers and even video games. I even have an enormous social media following. I can thank the Disney show for all the stuff people can buy for their kids, like Zorro crayons, Zorro costumes, whatever. I was pretty flattered when Isabel Allende, the great Chilean writer, wrote a novel about me. Her father was elected president of Chile, but he was murdered in a military coup. And in one movie, I have a gay brother. I mentioned new media. 
Well, as a social media favorite, I know how to get more likes. And you must admit, this cat and I have a striking resemblance. I've given some thought as to why I have been so popular. I think people everywhere can get frustrated with corrupt government, and they like seeing me do something about it. I have a good sense of humor, too. I believe that a day without laughter is a day wasted. And I mean real laughter, not just a chuckle. And now a new medium for me, the opera. It w this opera was composed and written by Hector Armienta, who has written several operas all about Mexican-American culture. You may be surprised to know that I have been a great opera fan since I was a young man in Madrid. An opera about a hero like me is really quite rare, and I have had a hard time thinking of more than a couple. Siegfried is one of them. The opera premiered in Albuquerque with Opera Southwest in 2022 and was performed in Fort Worth as well. Hearing it here in Southern California, the place where it all took place is perfect. It's like seeing The Marriage of Figaro in Seville or seeing La Boheme in Paris. Here's a short clip from the opera. Oh yeah, one more thing, a Santa Barbara connection. When UCSB decided in 1936 that Roadrunners was a lame name for their football team, they decided to name it after someone who was a Californian and who was heroic. Need I say more? Just calling them the Zorros, that didn't fly. So they came up with using gauchos who of course are Argentinian cowboys and who have nothing to do with California, but that made no sense. Well, at least gauchos speak Spanish. Just take a look at their logo. It's obvious who they had in mind. <laughs> 